Welcome back to the yard, everybody, where faith and sports collide. As promised, we have our special guest, 12-time national champion, Rick Takahashi. Rick, how are you doing today, man? I am doing awesome. Hey, man, thank you so much for joining us here today. We're so excited to have you. I'm so excited to be here. I thought I was just going to come hang out and throw shakas. No way, yeah. man. You're, you're, you're the real deal. That was you're a good here intro. with us. Hey, um, let, let's get into it right away. Um, for those who don't know about the world of surfing, uh, why don't you just share a little bit about it and some of your experiences and kind of how you got into it? Um, you know, the funny thing about getting into surfing was that the only reason I did is we were all skateboarders. We built this ramp. We lived in Santee. It was hot. And where is Santee? For Santee those our listeners is that East County, familiar. San Diego. So it's a pretty good drive. At that point, the 52 wasn't built. So it was like a 45 minute drive to the beach to go around. Yeah. And when someone said, do, do you want to go to the beach? We're like, in, you know, every summer we're like, yeah, any chance we could get. And then we just found out that it's a lot cooler at the beach. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it took our skating to the water pretty much. Okay. So you were a skater, kind of just a little knucklehead running around. Yeah. You like going to the beach. You start surfing. And how did you, how did that lead you to becoming one of the most uh, um, decorated surfing guys around well we we had a crew you know everyone like your pop lock and crew yeah i had a name too wait 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 <laughs> you had a breakdance crew too yeah <laughs> <laughs> wait do you actually on the team or did you just bring the cardboard no i had like sweats with it all like embroidered on the side oh you, yeah. you guys went embroidered yeah you know yeah that's like being sponsored <laughs> <laughs> what was your name again auto rock baby auto and rock. i went with the parachute pants Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just in case I had to, like, hide eight random things and pants all over if a battle broke out. So you had the sweats embroidered. That's top notch. Red. 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 And what red. was your name? Skit. Because you remember that move, the skit? I would, like, st almost, like, spin super fast and then go into a pose. Oh, with the freeze, yeah, dude. The freeze, you get them with the freeze. Yeah. Yes. But the backflip... We can do the back backflip. We called something called a suicide. Yeah, you oh did yeah. it and just land on your oh, back yeah, yeah, and yeah, do yeah. something like freeze yeah. also there. Sure, sure. The suicide was cool, but it was for guys who couldn't fully do the backflip. Don't think I don't know that trick. Because if you could really do a complete backflip, you would do it. Those who could just kind of three quarters turn into a suicide because they couldn't land it. I thought I could do a backflip. I don't think at that time, though. Okay. The weird thing is, is like knowing that, you know, knowing a backflip, you don't want to do a suicide. Because that thing hurts. Yeah, the suicide hurts, man. Yeah. It it's hurts. Like Especially when you're at the roller skating rink. It's pretty much a flop. <laughs> <laughs> With a freeze because you're knocked out pretty the, much. The old flop freeze. <laughs> All right, so you start surfing. You have a knack for it. And next thing you know, what? Well, we had a crew. Like, a you know, our our actually the crew was the same crew all the time. We're just like, this summer we're going to be break dancers. Next summer we're going to be skaters. Oh, and then nice. after we're skating, we're like... You know, we decided to surf because it was a lot more fun. And then from there, you know, just being, you know, if you're just like skating or any other sport, when you're hanging out with your friends, you just want to be the best one out of your friends. Yeah, yeah. You well, know, football, playing on the field and stuff. You just want to be the best person. Well, one thing I know about you, Rick, is that you take things really serious as much as you like to have fun, is that you take your fitness, you take your training, uh, man, to the utmost uh, how did that correlate with you having the success you've had in the surfing world? Um, I just always knew that I wasn't the most talented. And mm. saying that, um, I knew I had to work a lot harder. Yeah. And I always thought in some aspects um, that I could control, I could be better than people. Like someone's not going to outwork me. Mm. You know, I remember running and uh, doing stuff at 10 o'clock at night, you know, in the middle of winter. Not like it was... You know, not like Chrisburg, Flint, Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, San Diego winter. Yeah, San Diego winter. But, you know, in Santee, it was cold. It was in the 30s. Oh, okay, okay. And, uh, you know, running the streets with face masks on and stuff because the air hurts so much in lungs. Just doing your miles when you could. Wow, man. And so kind of take me through the difference of your first championship that you earned, that you won. How did that make you feel compared to your most recent one? Wow. Well, everyone's different. The first one I definitely remember because um, I was making my speech and I had it all written out and I'm terrible at public speaking. And I get up there and I lock eyes with Tom Curran, you know, oh, two time yes. world champion. Listen, Tom Curran 
that's a name that transcends the sport. Yes. Because I don't know yeah. much about surfing. I darn well know who Tom Curran is. Yeah. 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 So I'm in the middle of my speech. I'm fumbling through it, and I see Tom to my right. And I remember uh, Tom Curran. <laughs> I stop. For our listeners, that's equivalent to your young basketball player, right? Yeah. And you're on the court, and to your right, you see Michael Jordan yes. or Michael Jefferson. And at that time, he was Michael Jordan. Yeah. So I look over, and I go, uh, Tom, can I take a picture with you after I get off stage? And he, he, just, he didn't even acknowledge me. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this isn't going good. Yeah. So I finish up, and I go back to my table, and Tom walks over. Nice. And we get a photo of Tom Curran. Now, that leads me into kind of what I wanted to develop as well. I believe Tom Current is a man that not only was an amazing surfer, the greatest of all time, yeah. but I believe he was a man of faith as well. Is, is that true? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I went and seen him at churches play and stuff like that. He's a musician, so he plays at churches or events or something. And, and every, every chance I can, I try to go see him when he's in San Diego. So, so as we're weaving the story... Where along the way did you come to know the Lord Jesus? Where along the way that did you give your life to the Lord? Did you accept Him as your Savior? Was there was there a moment? Was there some kind of just big epiphanies throughout the time? Um, I always felt the tugging, but then there was a moment in um, in two thousand two, the Bali bombing, yeah. where where I definitely heard God tell me something before we went out we we're going to go on a boat trip in bali our first night there and um for young listeners kind of just give a recap of oh, what the it? bali bombing was so we were on a surf trip to indonesia yeah. uh, the island of bali and in um 2002 there was a bombing you killed i think 212 people something like that and um so we're there on vacation, and it was a terrorist attack, and they put a bomb in front of uh, this club called the Sari Club. And so Bali is Hindu, and all the other countries around it is not. You know, they're Muslim uh, states or countries. So um, what we heard is they wanted to destroy the Bali um like lifestyle and stuff yeah, because yeah. they weren't doing it the same way as everyone yeah, else. Yeah. So they decided to, you know, blow up the place where people go and have fun. Shop, you know, it's a shopping sure, district sure, and then sure. stuff like Cause that. chaos. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, you know, right before we went out, it's super hot and we're all in flip-flops. The only reason we brought shoes is because of the plane because you don't know what's on the floor of the planes. It's dirty. Yeah. And so um, I just remember God telling me, to put on your shoes and to tell all your friends to put on their shoes too. Now for me, it's easy because I'm half Mexican. So I know when it's time to run, it's time to run. Yes, I feel you brother, yes. I feel you. And that. Asian, so I can calculate how high the fence is. That's so, like, that is really doubly blessed. That's like getting the double portion. You know, my other friend said <laughs> a different way, with the, which was equally as funny. He goes, you could still a VCR and program it at the same time. <laughs> I'm like, I guess, I guess I could do that. <laughs> Here, we live in San Diego, and this is how you know you go to a great Asian restaurant, right? The way you know you go to a great Asian restaurant in San Diego, if, if you look in the kitchen and the cooks are Mexican. <laughs> that's when you know it's legit. And that's the <laughs> ones I go to. Though I can only trust those. <laughs> um, anyway, I just told my friends to put on their shoes, and they asked me why, and I was trying to convince them it wasn't going very well. And then I paused and, you know, I went to my, my natural saying, as I always used to say back then, you never know when you have to run. Yeah. And everyone paused and then put on their shoes. Wow. And the significance of that is that um, when the bomb went off, um, everything glass broke. And when I say everything, we're in this shop and the dressing room doors had little pieces of glass and they were blown out. Like the heat shock wave was so massive, like 200 yards both ways in the street. Wow. Every single piece of glass, car, wow. mirror, every glass on the table was blown. It was it was crazy. So if you wouldn't have your shoes on, man, it would have been kind of impossible for you to get through. It was like two to four inches of glass everywhere wow. on the ground. And we came back and I remember our shoes 
the next morning we realized we yeah. looked at our shoes and there's glass shards yeah. everywhere and everyone else was getting stitches and stuff you wow. know because of the cuts they've accumulated through so the did you kind of trip and go like man that's god really spoke to me and kind of start wrestling with is, you know why does he speak to me and how did that lead to you now being a guy 100 percent committed to living his life for jesus um yeah you know it was um you know i was you know it wasn't truly how we think of saved back then you know i was always a believer you know i grew up catholic and i didn't really know i thought god was always mad at me because every time i went to you know their thing and you know the guy's yelling at us or something and and he could have been speaking Spanish. I don't even know. So God or the priest? The priest. Okay, okay. He was, he's angry. Because God speaks Spanish. Pro yeah, I bet. <laughs> but I don't. So <laughs> tacos are, and street tacos are from heaven. <laughs> That's true. Yes. Um, so yeah, so that probably started my um, shedding of, I would say, some of the lifestyles I was choices I was doing. And started um, going towards you know the church yeah. and stuff and then you know one day I was just literally I don't know why God speaks to me in the shower because maybe I'm relaxed and you're like it's almost like a hot tub you're like what's up you know he's got a little shampoo on is there, is there an echo in God's voice when he speaks to me in the shower because there's great acoustics in the shower yeah there is great acoustics Rick, yeah. Rick, Rick, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> wash your armpits <laughs> get just, your back too it's hard to reach I know but still you got to get it I'm not that flexible on my shoulders either. Isn't that you know that weird spot in your back when you shower? Yeah. It's so hard to get. I you know I always think of um, what's that movie where he he went to the bathroom it didn't work and he had to use the loofah thing. Yeah, I know what you're talking about to use something like that for your back. Yeah, I always yes. think that that'd be awesome. Why don't I have one of those? And that might be the dirtiest spot on the human body. Yeah, right. Because I don't know when the last time I touched <laughs> the middle of my back with soap. It's. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I definitely want to get one of those. Maybe, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll buy each other. Christmas. We'll buy each other once yeah, for yeah, Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Yours will be longer pulled up. <laughs> um, where was I? So God speaks to you in the shower. Oh, yeah. He just says, okay, it's time to go to church. Wow. And then I'm like, all right. So I just started, uh, you know, researching churches, yeah. you know, and stuff like that. And, um, you know, The Rock was really popular at that time. And for so, our listeners who aren't familiar with The Rock Church, what is the Rock Church? It's uh, one of the biggest churches in San Diego. Pastor Miles McPherson, awesome guy. Um, used to be one of the pastors there. Awesome guy. Um, a lot of ministries. Yeah. And obviously they had a surf ministry. That was one of the things that brought me to it. And it actually took me about a year to join the surf ministry just because I didn't, I didn't know what a Bible study was or anything like that. And it was, it was really um, weird like transformation is going into it and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, what would you say to, you know, our listeners? Because, you know, a lot of people tune in really to hear kind of the, the, the banter and, and kind of hear from the pros as well. And, uh, you know, there's some out there that maybe are, have heard God's voice, you know, and were kind of like, is that God? Is that not God? What would you tell them to encourage them to go from maybe hearing God's voice to really, really living a life of faith? What would you tell them? You know, um, I always think, you know, I'm a ministry leader now. So um, the most important thing is putting good people around you and trying to find a mentor mm. really quick and yeah. ask a lot of questions, yeah. you know, because there's, there's no dumb questions. You know, as people say, you know. Is there I, I have a theory about that. Uh oh. When I used to teach, I used to say, there's no dumb questions, but there's some dumb people that ask them. Right. That's true. Maybe the question ain't dumb, but man, you're pretty dumb. <laughs> That's what I tell my students. Because <laughs> I have some dumb students. Some of them are really dumb. Yeah. The questions were fine, but the students were dumb. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we just, uh, you know, I always thought that I just knew how I was yeah. coming into a church, and I assumed that some people are that way. So I don't, I want to be that person there for those people. Yeah. You know, just be there to answer questions and to help them along and to, you know, f and, and not like, you know, Bible thump them, but yeah. actually be a true friend to people. So how do you use this great platform that God has given you? Twelve national championships. How do you use that for God's glory or do you? Um, well, absolutely, because it's, you know, it's all God. 
you know, you're you're a witness to two of them. Yeah, in absolutely. Huntington Beach. Yeah, and it was. I remember that one time. I remember that when you were there. I was in. I don't remember what which number of title that was, but I was in last place, and I needed a super high score, and I went and paddled out. Yeah, and everyone's like, "I'm not going to fall out there." Yeah, because there's not going to be a wave, and yeah. all of a sudden that wave. I'm like, if there's going to be eight, because it's a, it's judged one to ten, and I needed a high seven. So I went out to where a high seven would break. I didn't stay where those guys were. And one came and, you know, I got that eight something and I walked. It was in the last 30 seconds. So it was very exciting. I remember that. Yeah. And I walked on the beach and I got the score and that was a, that was a great moment. And then the next seat, I dropped a nine within the first couple of minutes. You're like, wow, that's, you should just start off that way for now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember being on the beach there, praying for you, for the Lord to bless you with the great wave. And, uh, it was really cool. That was my first experience too, that level of surfing. And, uh, man, it was awesome to see you pull it off. Um, and the Lord to answer those prayers. It was just, yeah. it was kind of freaky. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was, was just really cool. That was a crazy moment. Yeah. That was definitely a crazy moment. Um, I totally forget what your question was. Me too. But, you know, the remembering that, and I remember this one year I lost. Or, no, I didn't lose. I, I was saying my speech, and I totally yeah. fumbled my speech because I'm horrible. Even as kids, you know, a yeah. bunch of kids in front of me, I get to talk and tell them what a great year it was and, and tell them about God. And I totally fumbled it. And then I just remember asking God, is, you know, do I get this one opportunity a year to impact yeah. the kids who are listening yeah. and I totally blew it and then I remembered that I got the call the next day literally an email that mm -hmm. night and the next day I got a call from director of surfing America to surf the USA team yeah I, I remember that you were bombed and the, the USA team is the USA team that's yeah. the equivalent of the Olympics for surfing yeah wow yeah. man well we can go on here all day Rick talking about surfing God sports but man, I just want to say thank you and I just want to encourage everybody out there who's listening, who's watching, that, you know, there's something greater than your sport. There's something greater than your team. There's something greater than your passions, and that's the Lord. And it's amazing Absolutely. how if we put him first, man, these miracles that he did for you, he's willing to do them for us. And it's so good we have a God that loves us, uh, that, that he blesses us with the desires of our heart, man. May God bless you. Appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for coming in today. Hi, right, brother. It's good seeing you. All right, likewise. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us today with Rick Takahashi, this great story of God's faithfulness. Just want to encourage you guys, stay tuned for another great show coming to you next week. God bless you, and we're out. <laughs>